Hey what's up guys, it's Saikur Sam here and in this video we are animating Unity Chan. <laughs> you might be wondering why are we animating this Unity anime girl and I just say number one Baka. Number two, it's like the Unity official girl. You can't just ignore her. And besides, it's also completely free to download, which you know what it means. She's free to get. <sighs> Not again. Well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you do, make sure to drop a like down below. All the thumbs ups are super appreciated. And it makes it very obvious for me to realize what kind of content you guys like to see. And without further ado, let's begin with this video. <laughs> Okay, so as you guys know, this is the second episode of our Unity Basics show that we run on the channel. And in the previous episode, we actually checked out how to make a terrain with the current terrain system in Unity. And now I basically want you guys to let me know your features that you would like me to cover up in this show and in the future episodes. Because I want to make sure you guys are a bigger portion and a part of this show together with me. So I'm not alone on this. So in case you have any ideas, in case you have any features you would like me to cover up in the future episodes, let me know in the comments because I'm also responsive so I'll not only be taking notes from your comments but I will also reply but now with that being said let's begin all right so here we are in unity and you can see that we have unity chan model open in the asset store right now and this is just to prove that you can download her for completely free by using the link in the description down below and in case you want to use a different model you can do so but I just picked her because it's a free model and it's already rigged so you can just Basically, it's a out-of-the-box model when it says rigged, so you can just animate her right off the bat without having to worry about rigging, adding body parts, and all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna get started by adding her prefab into our scene right here, and then we can just zoom in a little bit on her to see her a little up close, which sounds really weird. <laughs> Um, but we're basically going to just check out her rig real quick before actually doing any of the animating part. And you can see that really quickly if we go to her left up leg, you can basically move it and all that kind of stuff, which looks pretty funny. Um, and this is basically what rigging is in case you're new and you didn't really know about that. And now that we have seen her rig and made sure that everything works perfectly fine, we are going to start with the animating part. And I just want to mention that for this video, I'm going to use the legacy animation tool, which is this. And the reason is simply because I want to make sure I teach you guys the basics and the legacy animation tool is the one that I've used for many, many years now. I'm still not very comfortable using animator. So I just wanted to make sure you guys follow up with the tutorial really as good as possible basically and if you want me to recreate this tutorial in in animator specifically let me know in the comments because I'm all down for that but now let's go ahead and click on animation and let's open up our animation window here which is going to be where all the animating is pretty much done together simultaneously while working with the scene window and all the prefabs here. So first and foremost, you can see that we have no animations added to Unity Chan, which it's by default going to be added a few animations actually, but I, but I just basically removed the the animator component from her so that we can use the legacy system. And therefore it basically says empty, so we can to begin animating Unity Chan, create an animator and an animation clip. So we're going to go ahead and click on create and it's going to allow us automatically to create an animation file here. So I'm going to use the assets folder, which is the root direction to create this animation so that we can keep a better track on it. And we can actually call this one wave so that we have a little wave animation for Unity Chan right here. And if we go to the assets folder, you can obviously see wave and also Unity Chan, which is going to be the animator root so that we can use it with the animator toolkit if we actually want to but we're not going to do that because we're going to turn this into the legacy system and to make that easier for ourselves we can actually right click on the inspector while we have wave animation file highlighted and then we can click on debug and check legacy so that it turns it into a legacy animation and then we can right click again turn to normal and boom but now let's start animating so if you basically highlight unity chan you're gonna see that we have no properties but we can actually add them manually which basically means all the rigged parts that we can add so that we can rotate them inside of the scene window but you don't really have to manually add the properties you can actually do it automatically by simply switching to keyframe recording mode by clicking this record button right here 
and then moving the character inside of the scene window. And you can see that a keyframe is automatically going to appear and get created by Unity as soon as you start animating in the scene window. Obviously, you can also manually add a keyframe at any kind of location or time span by basically clicking this key add keyframe button here, but you don't really need to use it in case you want to do it the way I do with my animations, which is basically just moving it here, rotating her a little bit, and it's going to automatically take care of that for you. You can also use the undo and redo key binds, or pretty much like shortcuts, I guess you could say. Shortcuts is a better word, isn't it? So you can use them by holding down Control Z or Control Y, so that you can undo whatever kind of animation you just added for your model. So if you screw up, you're fine, don't worry. <laughs> and obviously, since this is the starting keyframe, it's going to be used for basically referring to, hey, this is going to, this animation is going to start from here and end whatever the last keyframe is in this window. So what we want to do is we first and foremost want to get rid of this T-pose, which is called, the, the pose is basically called T-pose. <laughs> I just want to make that clear because when I was new to game development, it was a little bit not so obvious. Let's just say that. I was like, what, what are they talking about T-pose? So we basically want to go to spine of the character and then also unfold further down the spine and continue with that until we see the shoulders. So now we can actually move or rotate perhaps the left shoulder But you can see that if we highlight the shoulder and even rotate that a little bit You can see that it's a it's a bit towards the neck So we don't really want to play with that position really So we just want to basically rotate the arm so that we don't lose her Basically it blues her shoulder like it, it almost seems like we break her shoulder Which is kind of mean so we just basically rotate the left arm a little bit and we can actually make it look a bit nicer like that with a better uh, kind of position or rotation to the arm. And we can also change the hand and all that kind of stuff in case we want to. We don't really need to do anything way too specific with the left one. All the, the waving itself is going to be done by the right hand. So now we're actually getting into that part. So I want to go ahead and basically, uh, yeah, we can paste, pretty much just rotate her right arm to begin with and see how it works. Since her shirt or blues or whatever that is, uh, let's say shirt, yeah, sweatshirt. Uh, since her clothes are a little bit in the way, I don't want to re like rotate them too much because they just look extended then. So what I want to do is I, I just want to have it like this and then I want to rotate the right forearm so that we rotate the correct part, uh, which is also a technique you use when rotating uh, character part, body parts basically, because you don't want to do all the work on just one body part in case you're rotating. It's just like your own body. If you rotate your arm, I'm literally rotating my arm in real life right now. So if you rotate your arm, you're going to realize that it's not just from the shoulder, like below. It's basically from the shoulder to the, l the right arm and then boom, it hits the, the, the elbow itself and then bam. From there, it basically starts rotating by itself, which kind of sounds weird without any visuals, but I might just kind of find like a little cool visual to add there, uh, which sounds a little weird. I, I just realized that for me, I see my arm, so it's fine. But anyway, so we basically have recorded this far, which is going to be the starting position. So I think we can just rotate the hand a little bit as well. Uh, there we go. Bam, and we can actually make it look a little nicer with the thumb because her thumb is a little bit too much in the way right now. So you can see the thumb is here, and there we go. That's that's pretty cool, actually. I just wanted to make sure that it looks as natural as possible. So in case we want to change it up, obviously we can change it up into further keyframes. But now let's move forward. So you can scroll down a little bit while highlighting the animation window here, even while recording so that you can just zoom out in the timeline here. Um, and then we can go to like 2.30, uh, perhaps we can say 5 seconds in we are going to move the arm a little bit. And obviously it's not going to move statically, it's going to move it smoothly. And I'm going to demonstrate that as a little bit better in just a little while. Um, so what we're gonna do is we are basically going to first and foremost rotate the right arm just like that. And we can perhaps now go to the right forearm and turn this into trans or yeah, from transform 
or rather from local to global so that we can actually rotate it a little bit better there we go and if we now go back a little bit in time you can see the smooth transition that i was talking about it can in fact also play it now the animation <laughs> it almost looks like she's like in space or on moon like very slow motion you can perhaps move it to one in that case and play it again yeah it looks a little bit better I think we can actually do a little earlier as well. There we go. And we can now basically... Oh, and also, this is a technique I use as well. In case you want to edit the same keyframe and return to a old keyframe to edit that, you can basically just highlight it and go on it with the cursor and then just edit whatever you want to. And it's going to automatically update that. So what I want to update here is the hand. And I just want to do a little bit. So we can perhaps just kind of rotate it a little bit like this and if we return you can see the transition just a little bit I don't want the hand to be way too much so and then if you just want to go back to the old position you don't want to and you you don't really need to like reanimate the old position you can basically just highlight the main keyframe which is on top and then hold down control copy which also works fine here and go anywhere in the timeline you want to and then just hold down control click on V you're going to paste it so now it's an actual animation that is going to loop which is pretty good i mean it's not a it's you know it's not the best waving animation it's not as a store ready <laughs> i'm i'm gonna ad admit like i'm not the best animator but it's still pretty good i mean it's you know fortnite worthy <laughs> if you want to add this like an emote in fortnite okay i'm just going to stop there um but yeah, this is pretty good, and this is the technique that I wanted to teach you guys as well, because if you just click on the main keyframe here on top, which is in the black bar or the gray bar, you can basically copy the, or pick, pretty much highlight the entire properties that, is, that are added in the model right now. And once again, if you want to go back to like how much the arm is bending or extending, you can basically go back to the the keyframe in the timeline and also highlight the keyframe and then just reanimate as you wish to. If I just want to rotate the hand a little bit like that. Uh, I'm, okay, it's broken. It's broken, boys. And we just do like that. Boom. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, even the right forearm could actually go a little further. That looks just stupid. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, now move that. There we go. So I can just play again and boom, it's updated to the latest version. Now saving the animation is just as easy. You can just hold down control, click S and it saves the animation automatically. Actually, in fact, it's saving the scene right now. Um, you could also just stop recording mode and it's going to save it automatically for you. Oh, so. and I actually forget about one thing. We changed the animation file to Legacy, but we never did with the model because it's still in Humanoid, which is for the newer version of the animation tool in Unity. So what you want to do is you want to go to the models folder in case you're using the same model. And I think this is the same for any kind of 30, 3D model you're using pretty much. Um, and even if it's different, I think it's going to be documented. So you want to basically go to the model, not the prefab, and go to rig and then basically pick legacy from humanoid and apply that now something that i did off screen that i just want to update you guys about is the fact that i removed the animation component from a unity cham because it kind of sort of required me to update the model by removing the component and then re-adding it to make sure that the animation works after turning the model into legacy from humanoid so what we're going to do basically here is in case you have an animation component just remove it and then drag and drop the wave animation onto your model so now it's going to automatically add the animation component and it's going to assign wave by the default animation and just once again make sure play automatically is checked and now you can go ahead and play the game and it should be playing the wave animation which is going to be pretty cool there we go so unity chan is now waving at us i don't know where my camera is but i, I just kind of wanted to make it look a little bit more professional i just wanted to move the camera while wow, i can't even see it okay it's very very far away um, but yes, that is pretty much it. This is how you basically animate in character in Unity. Obviously, you can make so much more than just waving. Like, this is just the basics. But as, as long as you have a rigged character, it really does become a lot easier for you to animate the character. And in case the character is not rigged, you're going to have to rig it anyway. 
um, either by yourself in a software like a 3D modeling software such as Blender uh, or use a third-party software or anything like that. One is by Mixamo, I think it was named, which is the infamous <laughs> animation company, which also made a lot of animations for Unity, which I know of. And um, it's not a sponsorship, I'm just saying the name because I have it in my mind. I just want to give you guys as many references as possible, basically. But yes, that is pretty much it, uh, for this video at least. So this is how you animate in character. Once again, if you want me to redo the tutorial in Animator as well, let me know in the comments down below. In case you have a different feature you would like me to cover up in the future episodes, once again, let me know that in the comment as well. And um, yeah, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it and would like to see more of these Unity 2018 basics. And make sure to subscribe so you stay up to tune for new videos coming up soon. And you can also turn on the bell notification so that you get notified as soon as I upload new, new content on this channel, which is a pretty neat feature. So um, yeah, with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the comment section or in the Discord server. See you guys, have a good night, peace out.